seven, six, five, four, three, two. Live from Hassan Park in Chicago, this is Craig Cole along with Bill Payton. And we are ready for the start of the semifinal game between Glenbard West and Tilden of Chicago. The big players to watch for, Tilden, Dempsey Norman. And uh, see number 30 for Glenbard West will kick off. Dave, I think that's Dave Swingro from the sophomore team they brought up. As Norman brings it up the middle and he dives up to about the 33 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for Glenbard West to the 33 yard line. I believe that is Dave Swingros they brought up from the sophomore team to kick off. Because Andy Andrzejczyk is out with a back injury and he will miss this whole game. Hopefully he'll be back next week in case we win. This is the semifinals of the IHSA playoffs. Tilden versus Glenbard West. As they line up. Hammond, the quarterback, number 10. Two men split wide. Up the middle to Darren Tate. And he goes absolutely nowhere. Maybe a loss of a yard. So it looks good for the defensive line right there on the first play. As Darren Tate, number 44 for Tilden, was stopped immediately as he got the ball. The other man in the backfield is Dempsey Norman, number 32. And he is the big man there for Tilden. He's the game breaker. And uh, they line up again. Hammond, the quarterback, calling the signals. Long count. Two men split. There's a snap. Quick throw over to Dempsey Norman on the flanker. He gets around the end, and there he goes down the sideline. And he's finally tripped up at the 43 yard line, maybe at first down. Okay, so it'll be first and ten for Tilton is the first play went nowhere. And uh, their second play to Dempsey Norman, he quickly got around the players and was able to get the first down. As Hammond calls the signals again. Tate's the only man in the backfield. As he hands up to Tate up the middle, he goes absolutely nowhere, loss of a yard. And we saw that on a different play there, but the same result as uh, Darren Tate went nowhere. Great play by the Glenbard West defensive line. That's just what we're gonna have to see all day if Glenbard West is gonna try to contain those building backs. Justin Norman is gonna be trying that all day and Darren Tate is uh, gonna be trying it up the middle. We'll have to see. If uh, as Hammond brings him up to the line for Tilden, it's second and ten on about the 47 yard line. Hammond looking for Slick brings him up very quickly. High formation. Instead of second and 10, it'll be second and 15 back at around the 42 yard line. Tillman looks a little bit uh, tense out there. Maybe they're uptight about just being in the semifinal game. Could be the only Chicago team that made it this far, that made it in, even to the playoffs because of uh, the that's school Chicago strike. Pu that's Chicago Public League. They switch the backs. Now they're in I formation. Norman is split to the near side. Hammond fades back. And he's rolling to his near side. He's looking. He's, he's got, got time. And it's thrown almost intercepted there by number 85, 6, Tom Bondrak. That's normally was wide open about the 39 yard line. He went down about 15 yards and cut to the inside, just, just on the other side of the first down marker. He, uh, gets to know, he then made a mid second cut to the outside, but Hammond couldn't get the ball to him. Tom Bondrak got his hands up in the air and almost came down with the interception. Okay, so. We have uh, 9.42 left in the first quarter. Tilden still has the ball, but it's third and a long 15 to go at the old, at the Tilden 42. Two men in the backfield. Norman splits wide to the near side. Now they form an eye formation. A man in the slot position for Tilden on the near side also. Hammond fades back, rolls to the near side, looking, 
He's got time. He's under pressure now. He throws. And it's caught. What are they going to call? The official is going to mark it down. And it looks like it's going to be a first down for Tilden. That was a fine pass by Hammond. He was pressured along the right on the near sideline. But he was able to get it away for a first down. Sweet was right behind him. But Norman dove. It was thrown under Norman. And Norman just dove for it and caught, came up with the ball. So that's the way the ball bounces. They've got the second first down. And they keep rolling. Dunbar West stops them, but then again, they don't stop them. There you see how important it was that Tom Bondrick wasn't able to come down with that interception the play before. Again, two minutes split to the far side. Norman out there, too. Tate moves, and he'll be called flags all over the place as Tate took a step just a little bit too early. I think that's the, that play illustrates what kind of advantage Lombard West has to the Tilden High School team since they don't have the facilities and training that Glenbard West has. They don't have any, they just don't have the kind of training that we have. So they're not going to be able to execute nearly as well as we are. They're a little bit confused out there right now. And they're having a little bit of problems against the well-tuned Glenbard West defense. We'll have to see if they're able to get some big plays and try to put in a lead ahead in the first quarter here. Tones a physical team though. As, as the roll option play, Hammond trying to go inside, but he's nailed by Randy Wozniak. No other word for it. Randy Wozniak came up from his middle linebacker position and just put the hit on Hammond as he tried to go down the left sideline. That was a great play there as they started the, the option play. They run a lot, and we'll try to see that. We'll probably see that a couple more times today or more. Glenbard West defense really coming through there. They're going to have to see a lot of that. They really have a lot of emotion out there. You can just tell Randy Wozniak just enjoyed having that hit. They really just want to get in there and do some serious damage to the Tillman running backs, discourage them from further participation in the athletic contest early. Hopefully that will discourage them from running that option play. Hand off up the middle to uh, number 22, and he's, no, it's Dempsey Norman who keeps going. And he's back up about five yards. He earned that all on his own. He slip tackles, moves around, jukes, and got five yards out of that one. Tremendous leg drive and agility. You can't really even call that a second effort. It was more like a tenth effort. He got stopped at the line of scrimmage, squirmed away from a couple of tacklers, then ran through a couple of other tacklers. Glenbard West was a little bit sloppy on the tackling. They were trying to bring him down with an arm tackle. But in any case, he didn't what, didn't get nearly enough for the first down. It's going to be third and 10 on Glenbard West's 40-yard line. And they'll huddle up, timeout called. It'll be third and 10 with a timeout called. Tilton just has to regroup here. They've made the uh, the last third down they had. They made it, and that was from 15 yards out. They passed to Dempsey Norman. So we'll probably watch, probably see another pass to Norman on the sideline as they've done previously. There's, a, there's a big heck crowd here for Glenbard West. It's, it, I would say it's probably about twice the size of the crowd here for Tilton. And uh, it's, uh, they have signs all over the place on the far side of the field. They must have at least a... What, are you, about 500 fans? Oh, probably more than that. It's hard to estimate from over on this side, though. Glenbard West is take, taking account of what it's going to try to do on this play. I would just have to think they're going to try to play in tough. They probably won't try to come with the blitz because you always have to be afraid of Dempsey Norman going down the sideline for a touchdown or, on a pass play. Or if they hand it off to Norman, he could uh, get some uh, room up in the middle and they have nobody to th take him down. I think they're going to try to go to Norman on the... Uh, up on a pass, but we'll have to see what they try to pull. Well, Norman's in the backfield now in the I formation in the back. They uh, wing it out to him, and he's trapped, and he goes absolutely nowhere. Oh, well, as yeah. Tom Reek and Jeff Sweet come in and take him down. He had nowhere to run. That's Tom Reek really showing what he means to the Glenbard West defense. He flew right by his man on the left side and just ran Jeff Norman down. Jeff Norman, with the great speed, couldn't escape Tom, uh, Tom Reek, the 6'2", 215-pound senior. Incredible play right there. It'll be fourth and uh, about 16. As I think Norman punts too, as I, I recall. Brian McWhorter and Jeff Sweet will be back to receive the punt. Glenbard West will probably try to set up a good punt return, try to get the ball up around the 40-yard line if they can. Norman will be punting. He has a little trouble with his uh, equipment. And there is, they roll the clock again. Well, that's, he's standing at the four, his own 42-yard line. High snap. He's got time, though. Low kick. Oh, the wind the really took that. Watch out. And it's down there. It's about the 32-yard line, I believe. 
the wind, I, I thought for sure uh, Sweet was right in great position to receive that one, and the wind just held it up and dropped it five yards in front of him. That was a very dangerous play because Wilmer Lewis had a couple of blockers up around the 30-yard line. They didn't know, they thought that the ball had gone way over their head. That almost hit a Glenbard West player as it came down. If that had happened, it would have been a free ball. Till would have had a chance to recover it. Let's hope Glenbard can get this. The first offensive drive for Glenbard, 6.55 left in the first quarter. It scores 0-0. Zero zero. And let's hope Chris Hart, Hart can uh, get something going here for Glenbard West. Sweet comes in motion to the near side. Hand off up the middle to Kanapka, and he just keeps his legs moving and gains about five, six yards off of that play, surprisingly. The great line surge on that one. It looks like Glenbard West's offensive line is going to be able to beat the Tilden defensive line on... on, on running play. Let's well, hope so. Yeah, Tilda's having a little bit of problem getting organized a little bit. Glenmark West looks like they're having a, a little head start on the execution. But the whole key to this Glenmark West offense is going to be whether they can execute. Because if they can, they're going to go into the end zone several times today. There's just no way they can be stopped. It'll be about second and six as Sweet comes in motion to the near side for Glenmark West. And Hart's going to fade back, rolling to the far side. He throws over the middle, caught by number 80, and down the sideline from 35 to 30 to the 25 before it's finally upended. That's Carl Pikus, number 80, wearing a different uniform today. He's playing the tight end position for any injured Andy Andrade. That was a great play. Chris Hart rolled out to his right with Tom Reese blocking in front of him. There was no pressure on him. He unloaded perfectly to Carl Pikus right on the right sideline. Pikus just took it and motored all the way down inside the 30-yard line of Tilden for a big first down. Glenbard West has the big first big play of the game. First and 10 at the at the 26-yard line. A mo motion by Sweet goes to the far side. And it's a fumble, uh -oh, and it's recovered by Tillman. Oh, so after that tremendous play, the chance for Chris Hart to try to fight this. It looks like Glenbard West got a little bit overconfident. They just made a mental mistake. Had a little trouble with the remnants of last week. Yeah, they had a little bit of trouble with the snap, and then Tillman recovered the fumble. That's a bad break for Glenbard West. Well, so it'll be first and 10 for Tilden now at about the 21-yard line. We'll have to see if Glenbard West defense can put something together, stop him here, and so the offense can get the ball back. Disappointing right there. It looks like uh, Belvedere all over again. Last week they fumbled six times. Up the middle goes number 10, Hammond, on the quarterback sneak, I believe. They picked up about eight yards in that play. He must have saw, seen something up the middle. They had a little bit of gap there, and he took it. And advantage of it for about eight yards up to about the 28 yard line so it'll be second and a long two perhaps three Hammond brings him up to the line two men split one on either side two men in the backfield Tate and Norman and it's up the middle again by Hammond they're trying to pick up yardage very slowly on the quarterback sneak it looks like he's going to be close to the first down, but just a little bit short. It'll be third and a yard, maybe a little bit less than one yard for the first down. Well, Glenbard West has to, has to hold here just to show them that they have a defense and not let uh, Tilden run all over them right now. Well, Tilden's playing it extremely conservative. You can't run a more conservative play than a simple quarterback sneak up the middle. Yeah, but if a conservative play works like that, then Glenbard West is in trouble. Hand off up the middle to Norman. He oh, fumbles it, but it's recovered. It looks, by like, Tilden. it looks like they got a break on that one's going to be not only recovered by a Tilden player, but for the first down, up around the 35-yard line. So they, as they move the chains, Tilden gets another big break. They're moving the football, but they, you have to wonder if they're gonna, their luck is going to hold out. 64, Dwayne Coleman came up with that fumble. As, as soon as Norman was hit, uh, the ball just popped out, and Coleman came up with it. Dunbar West defense has been out there a long time. We're still 0-0 zero -zero here with 350 five left in the first quarter. Hammond fades back, short pass over to number 80 and it's oh, dropped. Gosh. By that lieutenant receiver, Wendell Wright. It was a real short play as uh, Wright, Wright came out to just took a couple steps and uh, Hammond just tried to throw it to him. Well, Wright's a five foot seven inch, 160 pound wide receiver. It was just a simple case that he didn't, he, tried to go uphill before he had the ball. Maybe he heard footsteps on that one. He, there was a Glenbard West defensive back coming in on him very quickly. Maybe, uh, he, just, maybe he just chickened out. Two men split, one on either side. Norman and Tate in the backfield for Tilden. Hammond same, fakes the same play, and he's going to go long, and he's going to throw it. Oh, it's a duck. Sweet. Oh, yes, it's intercepted. 45. That was a terrible 
terrible pass by Harris. The wind just held it up in the air. He had a head cut in about three seconds. He just stepped under the ball and drove for it at about the 35 yard line. If he had been able to catch it in stride, he might have gone all the way because he had a lot of room down the left sideline. But in any case, Glenbard West hits the ball back on an interception by Jeff Sweet. They're going to have it first and 10 at about the 46 yard line of Tilden. 3.30 left in the first quarter. We have no score. Glenbard West on the second offensive drive of the day. Let's see if they can say the last one ended on a fumble at the 20 yard line. And Sweet goes in motion to the far side. Let's hope they can get farther than that. Maybe it's the end zone. Pitch out to Ostrowski. Tries to get outside and he is nailed by Darren Tate coming out from the uh, secondary position and just took his head off. Yeah, Tate looked like he grabbed his, his helmet. Didn't look like he got a face mask. There was no call on that one. Maybe he got the back of the helmet and just spun Ostrowski around. For, Stopped him after a gain of maybe half a yard. They might mic it at one yard. In any case, it'll be second and nine at about the 45-yard line for Lombard. That looked like a well-blocked play because Ostrowski seemed to have some room on the far side, but Tate and one other player was a were able to come up and uh, contain it. Everybody's in tight as Sweet comes in motion to the near side. And there's a flag delay of game against Lombard West. They're really looking at that clock today. Well, the officials are maybe being a little bit picky out there. That was pretty close. Lombard West was about to get that ball off when they called the penalty. That's the second delay of game penalty we've had so far. Tilden had one called earlier. The officials just letting everybody know that they're here too. Hart brings them back up to the line. Try again, second and 15. Looks like a diamond formation that Tilden plays out in defense. Hart fades back. He's got time. He throws over the middle. Caught by Sweet. Oh, what a and beautiful pass. To the 33-yard line. And that's where Sweet goes down. You can't have a, a more perfect pass. Hart dropped back and rolled a little bit to his right side. Then he unloaded it over the middle to Sweet, who was right in between the strong safety and the weak safety, right at about the 33-yard line. He was brought down after he picked up maybe one more yard before he was dropped down, but that was a great play by Glenbard, Glenbard West. Now let's see if they can maybe establish the running game and go on into the end zone right here in the first quarter. 2-12, left on the clock in the first quarter as Sweet goes in motion to the near side. Head off to Kanapka, and he absolutely is stonewalled. As he went nowhere and lost him maybe a yard or two. Well, there was no room, <coughs> absolutely no room inside as the blocking really broke down. That charge was led by one of the linebackers, number 53, Emmanuel Jones. Gunbrad West is having a lot of trouble establishing the running game. Every time they try to run, it seems like one person makes a mistake. Ten guys do it right, and one guy makes a mistake, and they're not quite able to get it together. But I'm sure that we'll be able to see a, that change here in the first quarter. Sweet comes in motion to the near side. Slip out to Kanako on the far side. He jumps over one person and gains about four yards before he's finally slipped over and down about the 26-yard line. To be about uh, second, and their flag's on a play. And it's against Lombard West. Clipping against Lombard West, uh, that is highly unusual on a play like that. Very, especially with everybody playing so tight. I cannot see a clipping play coming out of that one. And unfortunately, I did not get a good look at it as it was on the far side of the field. The playing service that they are playing on is, uh, is AstroTurf, which could cause a problem for Glenbard West, who's not played on uh, AstroTurf all year. Well, Glenbard West is going to be starting back very deep. It's getting there on their own 46 when this drive started. They've got about 20 yards to go for the first down after two bad penalties. Second and 20 for Glenbard. Hart brings him up to the line. Sweet comes in motion to the near side. It's a handoff to number 85, Jensen. It's Jensen in the backfield. He picks up about 10 yards off the, between the right tackle and end up to around the 37-yard line. So, Coach Jim Covert goes for the running play when Tilden was expecting the pass, and it goes for a good yardage. As Glenbard West is going to be up around the 37 with the third and about 13. 39 seconds left in the first quarter, no score, but I believe that Glenbard West is really, they've, they've played very well. Uh, I think they're, they, you might look for them to dominate the second quarter. Sweet comes in motion to the near side. Hart hands off to Kanapka and he goes absolutely nowhere as he found no room at all. It's the defensive line and Tilton just fell on top of him. Getting really stacked up in there every time Glenbard West tries to run the football. They're probably gonna have to pass quite a bit 
in order to get some children to play just a little bit off. They, they're playing what looks like sometimes a 5-2-4, but two of those defensive backs are stacked so tightly, it's almost like they're pay, playing a 5-4. So Glenbard West is probably going to have to try to open, just force those men off the line of scrimmage before they're going to get the running game going at all. Okay, it was 11 seconds left in the first quarter. There's a timeout called by Glenbard West. Maybe want to talk some things over with uh, Chris Hart, the quarterback, is uh, try to get things started here. Well, Crucial fourth down play. They're well out of field goal range, so that's out of the question. It looks like they are going to go for it on fourth and 13, but the, the problem is they're probably going to have to pass it because they're not, they are not haven't been able to get anything going on the ground so far. So if they do pass, I think they might want to watch for Carl Pikus again because that they had a play earlier in the first quarter that went pretty worked perfectly for about 25 yards. And you might look for that. Lots of people here for Glenbard West. Looks like the whole town turned out. Maybe the whole student body. The band's here, everybody's here. And the Chicago skyline is right behind the stadium. Looks pretty good. They haven't thrown to Tom Bondrack either yet, so we might look to him on the near side. Okay, Hart fades back. Behind the blocking is Tom Reese. He's got time. He's going to run up the middle, and he's head. Oh, he is head cuff, more or less, by number 65. The screen was set up well over to the far side, but Chris Hart was uh, unable to get the ball away as the blocking finally broke down. The, the, the offensive linemen are supposed to let their linemen in, let the people they're blocking in after a little bit, but Chris is supposed to be able to get the ball away over them for big yardage. That time, it looked like the defensive lineman got to him a little bit early, and so after a big sack, Tilden gets the ball over on downs out at about the 43-yard line, so they'll have first and 10. Right at the beginning of the second quarter, and uh, first quarter's over, no score. What are your thoughts? Well, Glenbard West looks like they're a little bit tense out there. They need to just settle down and just play the kind of football. I, coached, I talked with Coach Baker here, who scouted Tilden, and his thoughts were that if we play our game, we'll win. We can beat these guys. We're the better team. We have trained harder. We played a tougher schedule, and we've been able. We have a better team. Tilden, they have a lot of game breakers, but they just can't play consistent football with it. And if we can just settle down, I think we're going to win. We're go moving in here to the second quarter. Cameron rigs them up to the line for Tilden. Darren Tate and Norman in the backfield. I formation. Two men split to the far side. One in the slot position. As Hammond hands off to the slipping Dempsey Norman as he gets around the end. Maybe a gain of one up to the 44-yard line. Randy Watson made that play coming up to his middle linebacker spot. Dempsey Norman tried to go around the left side, but Wozniak just knifed through the deep, through the blockers on the left side and tripped him up behind the line of scrimmage. Dempsey Norman fell forward for about a two-yard gain. So it'll be second at about eight at the 45-yard line for Tilden. Tilden holding hands in the huddle before they go out there. Just to get, them, get uh, everybody... Psyched up. Chicago Bears, 1977. Hammond fades back, rolls to the far side, looking, he's got time. Now he's under pressure, steps up in the pocket, throws long, and it's, oh, what a pass away by Sean Kelly. Though. And they're calling interference on Sean Kelly. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know about that call. It looks like Sean Kelly had a clear shot at it. He came with a great play, knocking the ball away. The defensive man is supposed to be a lot of a uh, shot at the ball, too. I don't know about that call. There's a lot, a lot of people are upset on the Glenbard side. I, can't, I, I don't know about that call at all. You think, oh, and it looks like we may have a, another flag on the play. Could be uh, good, could be unsportsmanlike. like we'll have to see. It looks, that was a very late flag. We're, we're going to have to see what that one is. It might have been his uh, flag blew away. I think that's it's just going to be the uh, pass interference with a cost of 15 yards. Unbelievable. Sean Kelly came up with a tremendous play on that one. I, it, look, it looked clean. It looked they're, clean from up here. They're giving them the, they're giving them Tilden the first down back at the 42 yard line. That could be a very big play because it looks like Lombard was going to force Tilden into a very bad situation. But Tilden gets out of it with another lucky break. And I'm sure Sean Kelly is very upset by that call. Ham is under pressure. And there it is. Jeff Sweet. Jeff Sweet coming up for the safety position with a great sack. Shoving it right back in his face. Oh, there it is. Jeff Sweet really atoned for that one call by the referee for the uh, pass interference call and just nailed Hammond before he had a chance to get away with the pass. Oh, what a play by Jeff Sweet. About a 10 yard loss. The fans are now, now getting happy again. Uh, they look to us from where we were sitting like it was a bad call by the referee. Of course, he had a much better position on it and we probably shouldn't dispute it because he was right there on the plane and we're a long way away from it. 
but Jesuit comes up with a big play right back. Tillman is once again in trouble with second and 20. Two men in the backfield. Two men split. Long count by Hammond as he fades back again. He's going to unleash it down the sideline. And it's going to fall short. No, it's caught. And he steps out of bounds. That was Jesse Norman. And Dirk Meyer got all twisted around. They could not come up with it. It's a really unfortunate play for Dirk Meyer. He had initial good position, but it looked like he didn't think the ball was going to carry that far. That was an unfortunate play. Dirk Meyer's a great player. He just looked like he made a little bit of a mistake. Jesse Norman was out there, just camped under the ball and came down with it about the 10-yard line. Ten line. It'll be first and 10 for Tilden. They get another big break. That's what they'll do. They'll come up with three bad plays, and then they'll hit you with the fourth big one for 50 yards. They're a, game, they're a big play offense. We're going to have to see if we can stop them now. We're going to need a goal line stand like we did at Down at Grove North. Let's hope so. High formation. Two men on the far side. It's going to be... Oh, it's fumble. a fumble. It's a big... Norman picks him up way back in the backfield. He's under pressure. He's got to get to the He's trying to get around the end, and he's tackled. Oh, there it is. Mike Compton hit him from the... He came all the way from the defensive end on the other side and nailed, nailed him. There were about eight hitters on that tackle. Dempsey Norman, that was a big mistake when he dropped that football. It looked like he had some room around the end. He might have even gone into the end zone. But when he dropped it, he gave Glenbard a chance to recover, and they pushed him way back for about a seven-yard loss, back to around the 17-yard line. Well, Hammond's snap was very low, and Norman couldn't pick it up, and he was all ready to go as soon as he, the ball touched his hands and it just fell out. Just an execution error on the quarterback's part. Now they're going to probably throw to Norman as they split him wide to the far side. And Hammond does fade back. They're isolating him one-on-one -on -one with, and he's down. Sack and it's a fumble. It's picked up by Glenbar. There it is! Yes! Oh! Glenbar went up with a good play. The intended receiver was over in the right flat. Norman. He looked, he was open for a minute. He was playing against Brian McWhorter one-on-one. McWhorter with a big cover job, but he slipped on the wet art artificial turf, and Hammond had absolutely no one to throw to. He was hit hard from behind, and he fumbled the ball. Glenbar West gets the ball back. You just can't enough about this Glenbard West defense. They're really coming up to the plate with Glenbard West defense. Well, I saw, I isolated Norman, one-on-one -on -one with Meyer, and Norman slipped also, so that eliminated him from the play. As Sweet goes motion to the far side, Hart hands off to Kanafka up the middle, and he keeps bowling his way. There it's it about is. six yards. That's Glenbard West football. Just keep the legs driving and look for daylight. They've got to take the momentum that they have now and put it on the offensive line and just push forward. There's 8.55 left in the set in the first half. There's no score here, but Glenbard West has the ball and it looks like they're driving. It's going to be second and three at about the 36-yard line for Glenbard. We got an official timeout. Somebody lost the pass. Kanaka on lost his shoe. Lost Was the shoe on the on the play. He had a great run though. Picked up about seven yards. The offensive line looks like they want to establish dominance here. Now you had a really good hole up there, allowed Kanaka to get forward for those seven yards. But Kanaka goes off the field and is going to put his shoe back on. As it'll be Ostrowski and, and Jensen, Jensen in the backfield. The junior running Different back, combo. Jensen. Hope he has won once for 10 yards so far today. As they hand off to Jensen up the middle, and he blasts his way. Oh, what a run. 15 yards, so about 8 yards up to the 45-yard uh, line. And it's the same play Jensen ran before. Jensen just took the ball and got up ahead of steam and went right through the field and line for about 8 yards in the first down. What a running back, what a backfield they're going to have next year. They're going to have four or five just outstanding running backs. One thing you have to mention here, we haven't seen Bob Swingos. There was a little bit of conversation earlier in the week that he might be able to play. But so far, Covert hasn't put him in. Maybe he doesn't want to get him hurt uh, for just this game like this. Sweet goes to the far side. And it's up to the middle to Ostrowski. And he pulls oh, his he way. His he picks going. his way for eight yards. He gets, it looked like he was going to be stopped after about three yards and right around the 50-yard line. But he broke through about four tackles, kept his legs going up around the 45-yard line for a close to the first down. It's going to be about second and two for the first down. Glenbard West running game finally getting on the track. 7.50 left in this first half. No score. It's still here to here, but Glenbard West looks like they're starting to dominate. Darren Tate and another man in the middle linebacker position for the run of 6-2. Hand off to Kanaka who breaks the 6-2 and gains about four or five yards. That's a first down for sure up to the 39-yard line of Tilden. What an offensive line. They're really just busting the whole They ran a 6-2. That's amazing. Lombard West might just start thinking about the pass, but why do you need to when you're making eight yards of crack on the ground? They, 
Children's throwing everything we have at it, and we're shoving it right down their throat. The fans on the other side, Glenbard West going go, go, go. And it looks like they're going right now. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. 7-16 left in the second quarter, no score. Glenbard West looking to drive into the end zone. Sweet goes in motion from the far side. Long count. Hart hands off to the second man through Jensen, and he trips his way for about five yards to the 45 yard line. They make Mark with forward progress for about six yards. It'll depend to see where they're going to put it down. They look like they're going to go right out of about the 44 yard line. It'll be second and five. Glenbard West continues to roll on the ground. The excitement builds as Glenbard West looks like they're going to go into the end zone. Let's hope they don't only commit an error like they did before when they, in, early in the first quarter when they had the ball and they fumbled at the 20 yard line. Five consecutive runs have got us up here 30 yards. Sweet goes in motion to the far side. Hart pitches out to Kanapke and runs to the far side. He's got some room. First, first down. down and more as he trips up to about the 24 yard line. What an what a play. What, a, what an offense. There it is. Glenbard Glen West just is beating Tilton off the ball. They had a good track on the end. Kanapke was able to get around up for the first down, all the way down to about the 34 yard line, a gain of about 10. Glenbard West moving on the ground. Glenbard West offensive line is just getting the surge and they're opening the block for uh, Kanapka and Jensen and Ostrovsky. Gotta be very working. Gotta be very demoralizing for the Tilden defense to know that you're throwing everything you can at them and they're still beating you. Sweet. A hand up to Jensen up the middle and he gains about four yards as he is finally taken down by number 80, by number 66 for Tilden. That's the play that Glenbard West has run so effectively with Kanapka. With Kanapka. It's just a little, little counter play off the right side between the center and the guard. That play went for about three. It'll be second and seven at about the 21 yard line. Wazik brings them up to the, the center, brings everybody up to the line. Glenbard West really hustling up there. They know they can go into the end zone now. Sweet goes much to the far side, coming in the backfield. And they hand off up the middle. And Kanapka just keeps his legs moving and gains about four yards, five yards on the play. Unbelievable. Glenbard West really just running it right down their throat, picking up five, six yards of crack. Kanapka got close to the first down. I don't think they're going to quite give it to him. They may have to call for a measurement. Yeah, they're really. Yeah, they are. They look like they're going to call for it. Tilden is just not able to play with the front line at this moment. Tilden very disorganized out there. They're just milling around. we got substitutions galore for Tilden trying to spark some sort of resistance in the Tilden defense. Well, Glenbard West just has to make sure they don't make any errors. Mentally First down. or physically. First down, the official team again. Mentally or physically, Glenbard West cannot make any errors. Uh, and they can win this ball game. Right now they're on the 14-yard line, threatening to score for the first time. There's 5.45 left in the first half. We still have no score, but Glenbard West threatening. I was wondering at the beginning of the game who would bring in the play since Hal and Pikus are both playing, and usually the tackles play the game. As they have, Tilden has some trouble. Number 66 has to run back into the line, and uh, Hart calls a long count, unfortunately. Hands off to Kanaka, and he goes about three yards as he trips over some linemen. Uh, Hart should have kept going. Well, it looked like... Should've caught a uh, shorten the count, maybe well, run up the middle. But then, then you get the chance of having a mistake, and that would have been very bad. That play was a real good example of what kind of football Glenbard West was playing. Kanaka looked like he was going to be tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but he jumped over one man and fell forward for four or five yards. That's just great football. They're down around the 10-yard line, still knocking on the door. The way they're shoveling in the plays this week, Ostrowski and Jensen in the backfield are shoveling in the plays. Every other play, they go out. Sweet comes in motion on the near side. Hart fades back. He's under pressure. He throws, and Pikus oh, drops it in the end zone. Oh, there was nobody within 15 yards of Pikus. But the red after trip, he was unable to slow down. You could see him just straining, trying to stop his momentum. But he, he just couldn't slow down enough, and the pass fell a little Somebody bit Somebody in the defensive secondary was not paying attention. The defensive Pikus. back fell down right at the goalpost. He tried to cut with Pikus, and Pikus made the cut, but the defensive back fell down. He was all alone by a telephone, but he, he just couldn't get it down. Just couldn't, Hart, make, just couldn't make the call. Hart lofted the ball up there. He knew he had a touchdown, but Pikus just wasn't able to slow himself down. It's a Four, bad break for one by. 446, third down and six. Coming up to the first half. Into the first half. Kanaka running around the end. He's got some room. And he's going to be into the end zone. To the one. Touchdown. Yes, number one fans go wild. Touchdown, Pike uh, Kanaka from 10 yards out. As uh, there was excellent blocking by Glenbard West. 
and if the score stands 6 to nothing, we'll, as we will see what they'll do for the extra point. Will they go for two, or will they bring in Young to kick the extra point? Or maybe Stadium, here we come. Well, let's... Uh, they looked really dominant here in the first quarter, though, first half. You were really right. Lombard West really started to assert themselves in the second quarter. That was a 36 play. They, got, they picked up 10 on the, on the call. They're going for the two-yard conversion. Could be the smartest play of the game if they make it. Hand off to Kanapka, and he is hit hard, and he's not going to make it. Oh, a big play by the Southern defense. At the first half, they really looked impressive on that entire drive. They finally just came up and met the challenge. And everything they were looking for, Kanapka is between the guard and the tackle. And they got some sort of two-point conversion. They needed to pick it up, get into the end zone for two points, but they weren't able to do it. Children came up with a big play. So it's 6 to nothing. Lombard West takes the lead. You know, if Glenbard West loses by one point, everybody's going to look at that and just say, oh, if we, we could have only made that. But I was talking to some people today that they thought the conversion would be the best thing right off the bat. You get the two points, you put the pressure on Till to make it, and if you don't make it, it's still early in the game. You have the chance to come back and get those the points back. The other, so, thing, the other thing you really have to consider is our number one place kicker, Randy Andres, was out. I, if he had been in there, they might have just gone for the one-point conversion. But Young's been kicking all, game, all season, basically, until the, the final. So, I don't know. Covert's got it. It could be a smart decision. We'll have to see later in the game. As one year olds coming up from the sophomore game, will squib kick it to the 25, to the 20, and it's a fumble as Norman picks up the, the 15, trying to get outside. Starts up the oh, middle, watch it. Watch and he's, he's dangerous. Finally brought down by Rich Jensen, looks like. Tom Bondrack. Tom Bondrack on the kickoff team. Is he oh, quick? Jensen Norman has returned three kickoffs for touchdowns so far this year. He's just an amazing athlete. He, he looked like a, he was caught. If you give him a crack, he'll use his 440 speed and just go all the way. That was a very dangerous play. He had three three Glenbar West people breaking down with him, but Norman broke down with him and darted right past him. And Bondrack quickly came back from behind and took him down. Yeah, such quickness. The Southern fans start trying to get their team motivated. Just Reed comes in on the blitz. Oh, he hit Darren Tate right up the middle. Got him almost as he got the ball. Oh, what a play. Great call by Jim Covert. Had him coming up the middle. They guessed right on that play. It could have been disastrous if it had been a quick pass, but Jess Sweet just blew by the uh, offensive line. And that's what happened uh, against Weber is, and Belvedere. They could not pick up the blitz. And Jess, and this is happening right now. Tim is just not picking up the blitz. And Sweet is getting into the backfield. Credit Jeff Sweet with an outstanding effort on that play. Okay, all right. Children trying to put something together here. Watch for Justin Norman. They always like to go for him when they're in tight situations. Hammond fades back. He's under pressure. And Reese is chasing. He's going to go up the sideline. And he steps out of bounds at about the 38 yard line. And he'll be close to the uh, original line of scrimmage. Probably back to the original line of scrimmage at the 40 yard line. That play they used Justin Norman as a decoy. They split him out to the right on the strong side. Trying to get Glenbard West to shift down a little bit on their pass coverage. But they came back to the weak side. They had one receiver going out in a quick sideline pattern, but there was no go. It was well covered, and Hammond was forced to run the ball. Reed's coming from the uh, guard position. Guard position coming, coming in and chasing him, although Hammond's a little quicker than uh, Reed is on the ground. He just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. It's third and 11 for Tilden. Hammond rolls out to the far side again. He's got time, and now he's in the pressure. Throws up the middle, and it's... It was tipped away by it like Vondrak. It was either Vondrak or Sean Kelly that tipped that ball. Hammond rolled out to the right side looking for Jensen Norman. He started to throw the ball, then realized that Norman was too well covered, then decided to go ahead and throw the ball, but it was tipped away. Good play by the Glenberg West pass coverage. So it'll be fourth and 11. 3.24 left in the first half. Glenbard West leads 6 to nothing, And uh, remember, Tilden is a big play team. We, I don't think that we, we can expect a mistake here from Tilden on 4th and 11. We'll have to see, though. They might try anything. And it's going to be a low kick. Sweet back at the 20. Bounces at the 20, picks it up at the 12, and he goes at the sideline. And he goes out of bounds, stopping the clock with 3.13 left at the 26-yard line. First and 10 for Glenbard West. Very smart play by Jeff Sweet. That, that ball is getting wet out there. It hit on the AstroTurf. The Tilden players were coming down there. About six of them right in front of him. He just stepped right out of bounds before they got to him. The Tilden players were a little upset with that. I think they may have just, I just called him a few names or something. And anyway, Jeff Sweet on a very smart play. If they hit him hard with a wet football, it, and it pops loose there, it's a Tilden touchdown. So Chris Hart comes running out with the play. 3.13 left on the clock in the first half. Glenbard West leads 6 to nothing. And Glenbard West hopefully makes 
let's hope they can put it in the end zone or get a field goal before halftime. 3-13, they have to do it quickly. Hart pitches out to Kanaka, run, trying to get outside, turns the corner, and he's 10 yards on that play for Kanaka. She gets all the way back up to the 20, 35 yard line. And Jesse was in and there on the pass, and it looks like it was Jesse Norman coming over there from the defensive back. He's the fourth leading tackler on this team, and that tells you a whole lot about what he can do from the defensive secondary position, defensive back position. He's an amazing athlete. He's a, he's a player of the year, according to the Sun Times in Illinois High School football. And he's just showing why he's that great today. There's 302 left in the first half. That play went out of bounds, so the clock is stopped. Glenbug was taking an awful lot of time, and he was the referee slowed him down. Playing a tight, the playing a 5 2 Tilden is as Hart hands off up the middle up to Jensen. And Jensen gains about six yards up the middle. Denson just powering his way at the middle, and you've got to credit that offensive line. Ball popped loose there a little bit at the end, but the official rule to Jensen is already down. First down for Glenbard up at about the 43 yard line. They're tr really trying to just eat up the clock a little bit. They're not going for the big play. They're just going to try to drive it down the field and maybe try to pick up a field goal at the end. 2.44 left in the first half. Glenbard West leads 6 to nothing. One of the key things to watch here is to see when Glenbard West starts going to the pass. As Hart pitches out to Kanaka, runs outside, cuts in the middle, gains about six yards. Six yards a crack, not bad. Yeah, but the only thing is, you've only got 2.30 left now in the game, and you're trying to pick up a, about 40, 15, two yards for a touchdown. Now, I think they really want to go into the end zone, try to take a 12 nothing lead into halftime. There's a flag down on the play. It looks like it's going to be an illegal block against Lumba. That's going to set him back a little bit even further. Well, they might have to go to the pass now, but the run has done, has been very effective for Glenbard West. And on the other hand, the run has not been very effective for Tilden. Uh, Tilden is having a lot of trouble getting a consistent offense. They've had several really big plays. They had a 50-yard pass to Dempsey Norman, but they haven't been able to put a consistent drive together. And that's what you really need to get in on this Glenbard West defense. Okay, so the first down and 10, first down and uh, 20, excuse me, as run by the left, we'll try to get some offense rolling. And their ball, the ball is on the 34-yard line, and we might see some air action, uh, some air action right here. Sweet comes in motion to the near side, hand off up the middle to Jensen, goes absolutely nowhere. The defensive line rides to the occasion on that one. Clock runs down, we're moving down to about two minutes. Glenbard West offense really not hurrying up that much. They're not calling time out. Maybe Colbert's going to be content to just run the ball off. Don't give Tilden a chance to get the ball back here in the first half. And that may be really smart because, as we said before, one big play is all it takes with Jesse Norris. Second and about 17. Glenbard West letting a lot of time run off the clock. They don't look like they're going to try Well, to if they put it in the air, there's a possibility of an interception. The backfield, the defensive backfield for Tilden is extremely quick and fast. Hart will, he's going to fade back, looking, throws long, and it's going to be out of bounds. Kanaka, the intended receiver on the far side of the field. He, was, he had beaten his man, but Hart just uh, could not reach him, it's overthrow very, him. It's very tough to throw. Glenbard West is known from left from east to west on this field. They're trying to throw into a very stiff breeze. That ball hung up in the air a little bit more. Made, that, the wind may have carried it out of bounds. So, Chris Hart brings him up the last scrimmage. There's 126 left in the half. It's still done by West 6. Tilden 0. A handoff up the middle. It's back to the So that'll make it bring up fourth down with 116 left in the half. Looks like Tilden's going to get the ball back in, in any case. That pass really kind of screwed up everything. It's not, when the hit fell incomplete, it stopped the clock. And Tilden is going to get the ball back because of that. Fourth and about 15. Okay, 116 left in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the half. And uh, time is very precious here for Glenbard West. Just have to see what they do. I would think that they would punt right here and try to hope that uh, their punt coverage is 
right on the button if, in case Norman breaks one up the middle. Well, you really can't do anything but punt in a situation like this. You, I think the one thing they might want to do is try to punt away from the kick receiver because if it's Dempsey Norman and he gets that ball in stride, it can be a touchdown right back to Lombard West. Also, if it gets high up in the air, if we punt that high up in the air, the, the wind is going to knock, just bring it back. So, so he's just going to have to do a number right here and he's, he can do it. And they'll send Norman back for Tilton, back to the 34-yard line. Going to the There's a flag on play already. We'll have to see what's going on. One of the Tilton players may have been across the line of scrimmage. We'll it is against Tilton. Neutral zone. Offside, Tilton is the call. He was in the neutral zone. You just can't see that. Well, that gives uh, Sweet an extra five yards. And Norman will come up an extra five, actually. To about the 37 yard line now. You probably have to expect a very short kick here into this breeze. Jesse Norman is probably going to get, if he catches by, he's going to probably catch it right around the 40 yard line. Well, let's hope he doesn't get it up in the air. Okay, kick is off. Kick it to the far sideline and it drops about the 34 yard line. They're going to signal that. 35 yard line. First and 10 for Tilden. There's a 109 left in the, in the first half. And I would imagine Tilden's just going to open up their offense and go for it. Yeah, we, we might see a uh, little razzle-dazzle there, a reverse, a flea flicker, or all kinds of bombs to Jesse Norman, trying to get isolate him one-on-one -on -one with one of the Glenbard West cornerbacks. You, you have to think that they're probably going to go to double coverage here because Jesse Norman is definitely the man they're going to be looking for. Okay, Hammond, the quarterback, brings him up to the line, and they're going to split Norman to the near side and another man to the far side, eye formation. And Hammond fades back. Looking, rolling to the near side, looking, 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 still looking, he's under pressure, he's gonna turn up field, and Compton hits him, but he can't go down, and finally he's brought down at the 50 yard line after gaining him about 11 yards by number 80, Pikus, and number 51, Randy Wisnick. So Hammond, a little agile, gets 11 yards on the play, but that's not what they wanted to do, and that ate up about 12, 13 seconds on the clock. Yeah, Glenbard West wasn't able to contain Hammond. If they had been able to keep him in, there may be a flag down on the field. Yes, there is. It looks like it's going to be against Tilden, so that play is going to be nullified. 13 seconds goes for absolutely nothing for Tilden. It's going to be a big penalty. It looks like it could be holding. Probably is. In a case like that, with the quarterback running, you just turn around and try to hold your man where he is. Oh, Tilden put way back. We're talking about the 21 yard line, first and 29 yards. Golden now has, they have to get you know, 79 yards for a touchdown here. Norman just 46 split. seconds. And Hammond fades back, looking, throws, and he's got Norman open, but it's overthrown. As Sean Kelly and Dirk Meyer were out there, they had the double coverage on him, like I, like I said. He, he was looked like he may have had a step on one of them at the about 40 yard line, but there was another one right behind him. It was almost impossible to throw into a sandwich like that. So that play wasted about eight or nine seconds. There's now 39 seconds left in the first half. Glenbard West still leads 6 to nothing. This is WGHS 88.5 FM in one hour. I'm Bill Payton along with Craig Cole. We're going to bring you all the second half action after second half action. Here at Norman Hampton Stadium. Norman's out split, and they're going to try to go up the middle with Hammond on a quarterback sneak, but Glenbard West just says no, as the defensive line was, I guess, ready for that, or they were just looks like right Dill there. Looks like Dillon's just running out the clock. They realize they're not going to be able to get into the end zone, and they don't want to make a costly turnover to Glenbard West here, which is seconds left in the first half. So that will probably be it in the first half. Tilden doesn't have to get off another play before the first half ends. Uh, they're just going to sit in the huddle, it looks like. Nine, eight, seven. So Glenbard West leading six to nothing as we are going to conclude the first half. And there's the, and there's the flag. Oh, one, oh, one second left on the clock. And they threw the flag. Uh, so they'll bring it back five yards. Delay of game, unbelievable. Referees are really on the ball today, I must say. And they're, they're on the ball, but that was unnecessary. Well, whatever. They'll put one second back on the clock.
And uh, having a little trouble with the clock. Referees give them one second. So Tilton will try one last play and maybe they'll go for the pass. I have to think that Hannah's probably just gonna take the ball and go down to one knee. They don't wanna give Grumbar the chance to go back. And if the quarterback, quarterback sneaks up the middle, that'll do it. That's the first half. Grumbar Russell goes into the halftime lead and puts nothing on the first the 10 yard run. That was in the uh, Jim, excuse me, Jim Sahak, the 10 yard run. That was in the first, the second quarter. It was about six minutes left to go. Grumbar Russell in the end zone. That's been the only score so far. So then, Really struggled there in the second quarter, but they still have one by the rest of six points. And you just have to wonder when they come back out here, it's just it's a zero zero ball game as far as they're concerned. They they know that they that Tilton can come back at any time. Okay, Tilton just not showing uh not showing the their big game their big game team, big game breaker team, and uh, we'll just have to see that what they do in the second quarter. The conversion miss and that uh, second two point conversion miss when Kanapka, Kanapka scored. And that's the way it stands, six to nothing. And we'll turn you back to the station. I'm Craig Cole along with Bill Payton. Join us for this. <laughs>
Plaintiff. It's going to be number 10, Herb Hammond, the quarterback, back to kick for Tilden. Jeff Sweet and Jim Kanaka back deep for the hitters. It's a very short kick received by at about the 35 yard line and dropped right there. It'll be Glenbard with the ball right about the 36 yard line and for the first and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Tilden defense really needs to try to put something together here in the first half. They had a little bit of problem there in the second quarter. Glenbard West really started to assert itself. Glenbard West, uh, on the other hand, is trying to reestablish his dominance. They want to try to put the ball in for a quick score right here. No mistakes, just march it right down the field. It's a pitch back to Kanapka. He goes around the right, right side. He's around the end up for about eight yard gain up to about the 43 yard line. Jim Kanapka going around the right side for a big game. Great execution by Glenbard West. It looks like he might have a little bit of trouble going around the end. It looked like he might have been stopped at about the line of scrimmage, but he was able to get outside for about eight yards. And they get, so it'll be about second and a long three for Glenbard West. There's a flag down on the play, and they're marking off a big penalty against Tilden. It looks like you have to wait for the official indication to find out exactly what it is. It's a personal foul against Tilden. It's a little unnecessary roughness action. Off there on the line. So that would make a first and 10 for Glumbar. That ends up being about a 25-yard play. 23 yards to be exact. That gives Glumbar West a first and 10. And it's about the 42-yard line. Goes on the move. with 11-22 left in the third quarter. The handoff is Kanaka over the right side. He trips off the line of scrimmage. and falls forward for about three-yard gain. Out between the right guard and tackle. It looked like he had a little bit of daylight up ahead of him. If he had been able to keep his feet, he would have had a big gain on that one. But in any case, he picked up about three and a half, maybe four yards. It'll be second and a long six at about the 41 yard line. Run by West on the move on the ground. They lead six to nothing, but they're looking to punch it in once again. Kanaska, it's a great play, it's a counter play between the center and the left side. That's been their bread and butter. Kanaska over to the left side. Okay, so, see what Lombard West uh, still on the move, trying to take over from their uh, first quarter, first quarter, first half uh, drive. And hopefully they can get something in into the goal line very soon. Uh, they want to score quickly, get some points on the board now. So they don't have to fight off a six and a half. Really hustling up the line of scrimmage. Red Hammond's going to come up, come up fast. Chris Hard hands off to inside. Oh, but it's not. Sinatra. Sinatra trying to get over. And he was down first. And then it's just, yes, that's Sinatra trying to pick it up. It was, it was third for a second down and about two. Third down and about two. They needed for a first down, but he was stopped short. Maybe he lost a half a yard or so. So it'll be fourth down. Glenbar West will probably be going for it. This is a big play. If Tilden stops him now, it should be called later in the game. And it's the Tilden crowd really starts to get popped up. Chris Hart picking up the line of scrimmage. This could be a very good play in the fog. He hates the pitches up. Kanowski trying to go around and he's got the ball. Touchdown. 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 Unbelievable play there. The blocking was right there. The defensive end slipped coming in, and that was a major factor. As Kanaka just blew by him and went down the sideline for the big play. And Glenbar West is in excellent position to take it in for the score. A fourth down play. They only needed about two and a half for the first down, but they picked up about 30 on the play. Down inside the 10 to about the 8 yard line. That's where they finally marked it. Chris Hart, the quarterback for the Hilltoppers, brings him up to the line of scrimmage. He takes the snap and he hands off inside to Rich Jensen. He's all inside the five down to about the two yard line. So it should be that they have. Okay, it's gonna, they're going to move it down to the three yard line. It'll be second and goal. And we'll just hope, hope that Glenbar West doesn't fumble right here. If, uh, if, he, if they can don't make any mental mistakes, they'll probably go into the end zone. That's all it is now. It's just execution. If they can do that right, they'll have it. Chris Hart brings him up to the line of scrimmage. Head he, off. Hands, he hands off inside. He's up close to the goal line. I don't think he got in. He's going to be 
stopped at about the one and a half yard line. It was a big line surge on that play, but Tilden stopped him at about the one and a half, about maybe the one yard line. They marked, marked it forward than what it appeared to be. It looks like he dove over for another yard. He's going to be third and goal at the one. Inside the one yard line. All they needed was for the quarterback sneak right up the middle. Two card following Randy Wasik. What are they going to do? There it goes. The handoff is not a touchdown. There it is. Run by the West. Go there. Picks it up into the fan. So wild. It's, that makes the score 12 to nothing. We're just under eight minutes left in the second quarter. Lombard West took the opening kickoff on about his own, own 34 yard line. Marched it down with the help of a children. Rough it, uh, unnecessary roughness penalty. Kicked it right down to the children one yard line and finally went, got it in on a canal to one yard run. The big play was the fourth down play. It was fourth and about two and a half. Kenopka went around the right end for about 30 yards down in the six yard line, and that's what set up the touchdown. They're going for the two point conversion, trying to make it 14 to nothing. They desperately need this two point conversion. Hard step yeah. back, he rolls out the side, he's got time in front of him, he's going to go in on touch. Oh, what execution! Tom Meeks was in front of him, and the children players are just falling on the ground. They all oh, they know they got beat on that drive. They're really going to have to put something together now because Lombard West has really established the dominance. I don't know what Clover said to him in the half times and he must have really just fired him up they've come out here the best we've seen them all year really they just they came out here and beat a great children team all the way down the field execution perfect by glenbard west what can you say they just drove it right to tilden took took their bet against tilden and tilden just couldn't come up with the plays that they defensive plays that they needed to stop glenbard west and West just looks like the dominant factor right, right here. Well, there's still a lot of time left. We're 7.59 in the third quarter. Glenbard West leads 14 to nothing now as Chris Hart went in on the two-point conversion. So Dave, Dave Swingrove, the sophomore, the sophomore, they brought him up in the sophomore team because of, so he could kick off. And what he has done all day is just kick it off low because Norman is back there getting the 10-yard line. No. Norman comes in, and they're going to put him at the 25-yard uh, line and hope that he and hope that he could pick up the swift kick by Swingrove. I think that's a really smart play by the children and head coach. It, it, Jay Swingrove has been taking a very low a low line drive so far in this game. Jensen Children Jensen Norman is right in position where he can pick that up, and if he picks up the football, it could go all the way at any time. We're just about set for, for it. Jay Swingrove approaches the ball. And it's up in the air, it's a line drive, it's away from Justin Norman, it's guaranteed. He's at up to about the 39 yard line, he's around the end, he's still on his feet up, up to about the 37 yard line where he's brought down. He dragged Dave Swingros. Why was Dave, well Dave Swingros was down there and he dragged Dave Swingros about two yards, but Dave was able to hang on and held him up for the rest of the uh, Glenbard West specialty team to come down and nail him. Well that was a really great kick, it wasn't long at all but it was right at Darren Cape, so they, they were able to keep it away from Justin Norman, and that's really the only objective on a kickoff. Norman comes split to the near side. And an eye formation as Hammond hands off to Tate, and he is nailed, taken down there by Wozniak, who just oh, there's exploded a, in there. A very late flag. We may have a, a unnecessary roughness penalty again. We'll have to see where it is. It's a dead ball foul against Lombard West. That'll probably be a 15 yard penalty. It might have been that Wozniak was in the uh, neutral zone. <laughs> And he was offside, so somebody on the off defensive line was offside. It may have been a late hit. That looked like it was a dead ball foul. We'll have to see. Uh, yes, it is a personal foul against Glenbard West, so that really hurts. And you have to remember, that's exactly what set up Glenbard West touchdown. That moves him all the way up to, killed him all the way up to the 50-yard line. First to 10. The Hilltop has just got to stop making mental mistakes and just put it together and play soft defense right here. Oh! Wait, there's a man on the Pikes, line, looks like he moved. Pikes took a gamble there, his number 66 on the end moved, but you can't, it is against Tilden. Wow. Pikes did a, I don't know, Pikes, he showed it to the referees, but it could have gone either way there. He said, he definitely said that the Tilden man moved. The referee saw it that way, he agreed with Pikes. Let's just, let's just hope the referee wasn't influenced by Pikes reaction there. Okay, no one's back around the 45, it'll be first and 15 if Hammond brings him up to the line. No one is split to the near side. Aaron Cade dives over the left side for about two yards. 
Vondrak losing the steal in that play. Not much room up the middle. Grunberg West defensive line really stacking it up effectively inside. Wiseman takes a little bit of time out to get his shoe back on. This is called timeout. That stops the clock with 6.50 left in the third quarter. Glenbard West leads 14 to nothing. What do, you, what do you have to think right now? What, what's Tilden thinking? Tilden's going to have to, they want to get their own game plan back. They want to they want to get that offensive line exploding against the defensive line. They have to capitalize on the mental errors that Glenbard West is making, just like Glenbard West did against Tilden. Because Glenbard West has dominated this game, although Tilden is still in the ball game. And that shows you something there about Glenbard West's mental mistakes. Then C. Norman is split up to the outside. Look like a reverse. They got it going. It's set up. Tom, Tom Reese out there. He throws it, he throws it down. And Sean Kelly comes out with a big tackle. Then C. Norman looks like he may be hurt on the field. I think it's just discouraged. You know, the thing that's really amazing is throughout the playoffs, it's always been Children's offense. They scored 42 points against a good Ravish defense. It's always been the offense that they've been able to put together. And they're being shut out. It's got to be just incredibly frustrating for them. The Chicago Public League can't representative who just can't put anything together on offense. And I'd like to see the totals for. Uh, we don't have any stats right right here with us, but at the end of the game, I'd like to see those stats because Norman has the game that much on the ground, and Glenwood West has done that all year. Hammond fades back. He's under pressure again, and he's going to be taken oh! down by Seidler. Oh, Jay Seidler coming up with a great play, and with him is Tom Reese. Oh, they're really just dominating. Hammond is. Down too. They look they are very discouraged out there. They will uh, it looks like they don't want to be out there. They just want this game to get over. It's 5.30 left in the game. It's gonna be fourth and about 22. What is it gonna be? It's, it's fourth and about a half a mile. Fourth and, fourth and 50. Fourth 40. and 40. Let's keep the clock right. Well the high snap. They go for block. Almost blocked by Sargent. It's good kick out to the 30-yard uh, 30, 30 line as it goes out of bounds. So Norman has a bad uh, snap from center. And he, it was too high. He came down with it, got it off right before Seidler came in and split, sliced it off to the side. And Glenbard West is in excellent field position at you the 30-yard line. If Jay Seidler had come in straight on towards the kicker rather than coming towards the kicking leg, he might have been able to block that because most kickers tend to put the ball off just for a little bit to one side. That time, the children punter kicked it straight on, and it was such a low kick. It didn't get up in the air quickly at all. Seidler might have been able to block it if he had just gotten a little bit over to his right. But as it is, Glenbard West still has great, great field position. That play was fourth and 35. We finally got it straight out there. Glenbard, it was a very short kick. Glenbard West is going to get it, the ball on the children 30, looking for another score that will put this game away. Let's hope so, but Tilden's a big game, a game breaker, so we'll have to see what happens as Fleet goes in motion to the near side. Hard hands fades back. He's under pressure. He steps up in the pocket and he is oh, taken back. down. Oh, that's a big play. By number 86, I believe, down there for Tilden. And Hart had nowhere to go there. He was under pressure as soon as he stepped back in the pocket and he could not get away. That looks like the man in number 88, Carl Brooks, who was 5'10, 107 pounder. Come, it came in there very quickly on the pass rush and Zach Hart for about a six or seven yard loss back to around the 37 yard line. So Glenbard West put set, has a little bit of a setback, but I, let's see if they can recover from this. It's 4.30 left in the third quarter. Glenbard West leads 14 to zero. Hart goes around the right side. He's got a lot of running room up the right sideline. He finally brought down and puts out of bounds after a gain of about eight yards up to about the 30 two or 33 yard line, depending on where they mark his forward progress. Chris Hart really taking off, showing a lot of athletic ability, getting around the end. 27 yard line, we're gonna mark, mark it about, it'll be third and about six, third and about seven yards for Glenbard West. And uh, let's hope they can get this third down conversion. They are close to field goal position, but I'm not sure who would kick the field goal. I think that if it comes to the fourth down, Coach Grove is just gonna say go for it. Hart pitches out to Kanaka. Kanaka trying to turn the corner, cuts inside, follows some blocking, and gets down to about the 20-yard line. It's going to be close for a first down. They needed to get to about the 20-yard line for the first down, and it looks like it's going to be just a little bit short. He'll be very close, but it looks like it's going to be fourth and inches, perhaps, for the first down. 
Lombard West continues to drive on the ground. They really haven't tried to do anything in the air in this half. They've been trying to just keep everything where they that keep everything on the ground that's been so, so successful for them. There's a timeout on the field. Just how it goes. You have to wonder what Kovic's going to call in this situation. He's got about, he's got fourth and inches. He's got a big lead, so he doesn't, he doesn't really have to get into the end zone of his drive. But he wants to get in to try to put the thing away, take the pressure off the defense. Because with a Jesse Norman, you, you've got the potential to have a touchdown on every play. Every time he touches the ball, it could be all the way. There's 3.48 left in the third quarter. There's a lot of time left. What do you think he might go for? Is he going to just go for the the few inches with Canasta over the off the left side between the guard and tackle or is he going to go with hard up the middle on the quarterback seat? They haven't done that very much because Hill has, been, has stacked up the middle so much. They've seen the game film and they've seen that that's what Glenbug West usually does on short yardage. You might want to watch the uh, quick quarterback sneak here. Uh, Colbert also probably told him who wants it more. We want the offensive line third. They've got the middle stacked up. They're probably going to go over to this one side. They got Hart on the, on the quarterback seat, but it looks like he didn't get it. He's going to be stopped, and Tillman's going to take over. Probably, I think Hart lost the ball. He grabbed out of Hart's hand as he went forward, and Tillman came over the ball. A bad exchange out there. That looks like it's, uh, another mental error that has been killing Glenbard West. Without the mental errors, it could be 30 to nothing already here in the third quarter. But in any case, Tillman will take over at about their own 25-yard line, first and 10, with running down to about 3.30 left in the fourth quarter. They need to get some offense very quickly. Confusion on the Tilden side as they move players around. Now they're set. Having hands off to Norman, who squeaks down the sideline, and he breaks it. About for only four yards. Oh, oh that was Scared a scary deal. Hard attack play. play right there. Randy Wasner came up with a tackle. If he hadn't made it, Jesse Norman was gone. He had full, he had, he had all the full speed going acceleration. Up. He had all the speed going for him in the world. He had a full head of steam up at about the 35 yard line, but Wilder was able to tackle him around the leg, and he was the only man really that could have had a chance at him between there and the end zone. That's the same play that they beat Revis with. I saw some films with uh, Norman running that exact same play, and he accelerated to the point where nobody could catch him. Hands off inside Jeff. Take over, there's a big hole up the middle. Children looks like they're finally getting their offense on track. Sean Kelly came up with a tackle from a safety position. That was a blew up with a huge hole. Looked like they may have been cheating on Justin Norman. They handed it off up to the other side to Darren Tate over the right side between the guard and between the tackle and the end. And for a big game for a first down up to around the 42 yard line. Remember, let's just have to hold on right now. Live yeah. formation. And and up. And the number 22 is running back. Oh, there it is. Looks like that was Tom Ridge coming up from the south position making the play. Tom Ridge flew by his man and got on number 22, Lavelle Pratt. He's a 5'7", 145 pound running back. A very small, but a very quick, very quick running back. Tom Ridge was able to run him down from behind. Two minutes left now in the third quarter. Lombard West leads 14 to nothing. You're listening to WGHS 88.5 FM. I'm Craig Cole, along with Bill Payton. The handoff is up the middle. Darren Tate trying to pick up a little bit of yardage, but it didn't look like he got back anything, really. May, they may find him a yard. It looks like it's been a third and 10 at about the 43 yard line for Tilden. The clock continues to run. They're not, they're just not doing anything. It looks, looks like they're just running two plays and then going for something big on a razzle dazzle or a big pass to Jesse Norman. They have to keep up the consistency now. They've, they've got the big plays, now they have to settle down, get the three yarders, so forth. But now it looks like they're going for a big one. Norman split to the far side and Hammond forgot to count himself. There's a flag on the play. That's another mental mistake for Tilden. That's going to send him back five yards. It's going to be a legal procedure against Tilden. So that'll make it third and 14 or 15 for the first down. Jensen Norman was split out to that side, and you have to figure that when he split out like that, that's who they want to go to. The Grumbard West has got double, had double coverage on them on that play, but even with that, is it going to be enough? Jensen Norman is just such an incredible athlete. And we'll run down long, long before, and Hammond's got the arm to do it. We'll have to watch out as they try it again. Norman splits to the near side. 
Simon Wilson on the near side, looking, looking, has time. He throws long. Foreman is broken long. free. And Kelly's right there and breaks up the play, and it's incomplete. No flag on the play. Some of the Sheldon fans look for interference. They're a little bit upset, but there was no flag. It looked like a clean breakup. That was a great play by the defensive back for Glumbar. John Kelly coming right there, stayed right with Norman. Two men, one defensive man had already slipped, and Norman was one on one with Sean Kelly. And they, had, they looked like they had triple coverage out on there, and Dempsey Norman still almost came up with the ball. 56 le seconds left now in the third quarter. Children will be forced to punt, so, so Glenbard West will get the ball back in pretty good field position. It's a very high snap. Glenbard West sets up the return. They let the ball bounce around the 35 yard line, and it rolls down to about the 33 where it'll be first and 10 for the Hilltopper. So, Glenbar gets it back. They're going to try to put the ball into the end zone. It's been so elusive here so far in the first half. They, they had one touchdown, but they had another drive stopped at around the 25. Well, they had that one drive at the beginning of the game that was stopped by a fumble at the 20-yard line, and then they, they went on to score the next time they had the ball, and then kind of stalled out, but they dominated the game. In the second half, they came out right away, scored, and then they had the ball at the 30-yard line because of a bad punt, and, nor and they fumbled. They couldn't get the fourth down conversion. But Strasky, he's got it set up. Sweet is well covered. Oh, and if there's a play on the play, it looks like he's going to be deep at the pass interference against Tilden. I don't know. That's a questionable call. It looks like the Tilden man had pretty good position on him, but it looks like that's what they're going to call. Jeff Sweet had a step on the man, but the pass was just through his hands at about the 30 eight yard line it's too bad we don't have a replay because i'd like to see exactly when the tilden man hit jeff sweet was it before the ball came over his head or was it after and the referee thought it was before of course they may, they may be calling face guarding they may say that the man got his hand up in jeff sweet's face and blocked his vision enough so that there's a penalty the tilden fans don't like that call at all it's going to be pass interference against tilden from the line of scrimmage that'll make it first down at about the 40 Seven yard line of Glenbard. In high school football, the ball is not set down where the uh, penalty happened like it is in pro football. It's from the line of scrimmage and an automatic first down. Glenbard West brings up, brings up the ball. Hard hands off to Drew Chanson over the right side. He's got a lot of running room. He picks up about eight yards to about the 45 yard line before he's finally brought down by the left side of it. Stenson has been the best time that Glenbard West has found, really, because he hasn't played that much this year. He hasn't played at all star. in the backfield this year. Maybe in the, in the JV game, but not at starting. And this is a semifinal game. And they, Clover, Bothroyd, and Salerno had enough uh, foresight and guts to use Jensen. And Jensen has done an outstanding job relaying, bringing in the plays, and also running. And that's the end of the third quarter. We have 12 minutes left to go. And Glenbard West leads 14 to nothing. But Tilden is still to be reckoned with. The, thing, the One of the great things that you can notice in this game is that we still haven't brought out our best weapon. Bob Swengross, when he's healthy, may well be the best player on the team. He had, he had an injury, two injuries that have ruined his season for him. He had a knee injury in the green and white game back before the season started. He was supposed to be the best, our best number one running back. And then after five games where he had to sit out, he, he broke an ankle. But now, he's about 80%, but we haven't had to use it yet. We've been able to put together a 14 and nothing lead without him. Chris Hart brings it back up to the line of scrimmage. Tanaka breaks the through. The middle, oh, for about eight and nine yards for the first down, all the way down to the 35-yard line. Red Mud West continues to roll on the ground. He had some running room there. He just got the block, went right through it, and plowed through some would-be tacklers. And he's limping off the field. Jim Tanaka limping off the field right now. We'll have to make sure, we'll hope that that's not serious. Rich Jensen comes back on. He'll probably team with Ostrowski while Kanapke is out. It might be that he has a leg cramp. He might have been a Charlie horse, something of, to that effect, because he was buried, and it could be that somebody's got a helmet into his knee or his thigh. And there's a Tilden player coming out, number 68. For Tilden, it's, he looks a little worse off than uh, Kanapke does because he holds his left side. As Glenbar West brings, comes back up to the line, first and 10 at the 34-yard line. Hart takes a snap, hands off to Jensen, who finds some running room, six yards, and the whole Tilden team has to come down. 
and tackling. A little extracurricular activity there between Radney Wozniak and Darren Tate. Jensen really took a big shot from Jeffrey Norman coming up from the safety position. Norman gave him a, just a tremendous jolt, but Jensen was able to keep his legs driving. He was able to pick up a couple of yards after that. He ended up on a hole. He got a, about seven or eight yards. Lombard West continues to grind it out on the ground. It'll be second and about four at the 28-yard line. He picked the pitch out of suggested going around the left, the left end. He picked up the first down, and that's about all. He's short of about the 20 yard line, but he did pick up the first down. The official indicates that. Bob Swingross is in the game. He just checked in. That's the first time we've seen him since the green and white game. Uh, this, the provider game. Bobby Swingross. Oh, but he's going back out again. He was only in there for one play. Bobby Swingross gets a big hand. He gets a big hand because he was able to get in there. Well, let's hope they put him back in before the game's over. He really the only thing disappointing is, for him. The only thing is, if they don't need him, they don't want him to get hurt. If they make the title game, that's when they'll use him. That's when they'll unload the gun. A defensive man jumps. And they're, they're saying the Darren offense Tate. jumps. We'll have to see what the official calls. Well, everybody's pointing a finger each at each other. Uh, let's see what the officials call. One the back judge doesn't know. The huddle by the referees. We'll say what they call. And Darren Tate is furious. Looks like they're gonna, it's going to be on Lombard West. Oh, Lombard West. Really? I misread Darren Tate's emotion. He just jumped up, shook around a little bit, and I thought he was in anger, but a little more enjoy than anger. Now, I don't know. It looked like the, our line was pretty steady. Darren Tate definitely jumped over the line of scrimmage. Maybe he saw something that we didn't. The referee called it against Lombard West. So it'll be first and about 15 at the 26-yard line. Yard line. Chris Hart brings him up to the line of scrimmage once again, trying to pick up the yard. He, he pitches out to Kanopka. He goes nowhere over the left side. He was lucky, though, because Kanopka cut inside very quickly a would-be tackler and was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. It looked for a minute there like he might be stopped for a big loss, but he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so it'll be second and 15. It looks like he may have had a little bit of daylight around uh, to the outside, but he wasn't able to get out there because there was a, several Tillman players standing in his way. Tilton just has to hold on right now. Lombard West has ball control, possession, and everything else right now. Blitz might be on to Tilton. Jensen gets over his own man. Couldn't get, out, couldn't get around number 65, Tom Reed, trying to make the block. So Lombard West drive looks like it's stalling just a little bit here. They had two plays to go for no gain. It'll be third and 15 still holding it about the 25 yard line. It seems that Glenbar West can run the ball anywhere else but down here inside the 30 yard line. They just seem to tense up. Tilden just seems to come alive and stall the drive. And I'm sure that the scouts from the other schools and the, and the other semifinal games, Joey Catholic and Bartonville Limestone, will be sure to note that. Handoff to Jensen. He goes up the middle. Crunch after a gain of two yards. So on third and 15, Covers would like to stay on the ground up the middle. Trying to pick up some yards where it didn't look like any was there. It'll be fourth and along 11, maybe 12, at about the 22 yard line. We'll have to see if Bob Turner comes in the game. We'll have to see if maybe they're going for a field goal. It would be a tremendous field goal for if they went for it. But it looks like they're just going to go for the first down. Bob Turner is in the game once again. Let's just hope that maybe he gets the handoff. Fourth and 12, they're going to go for a pass. No, pitch out it is a pitch to out Jensen, to Jensen, and he has tackled. Stop. Oh, that is a game of one. But on that drive down there, it did speed up a lot of time. There's only 8.25 left in the game, and Glenbard West holds on to its 14 to nothing lead. It'll be first and 10 for Tilden at about their 21 yard line. They'll switch the same, the 20 yard line they'll bring it to. So Tilden not in, not in good field position, but they're far enough out of the goal line so that they have to defend the pass. And here comes Jensen Norman on the near side. Watch out, he's one-on-one -on -one with Brian McWhorter. Having fades back. Norman caught it, but McWhorter hits it as soon as he catches it. But they pick up the first down and after about the 35 yard line, they're marking about the 36 and a half yard line. It's a big game for Tilden, and that's probably what they're gonna try to do. Isolate Justin Norman one-on-one -on -one with our uh, quarterback and hope they get the ball to him. Well, McWhorter did not do a bad job there. What else could you do? Norman has the juice, and the quarter's got to play off in some. He's got to stay way off of him because it's...
Dempsey Norman does a stop and go, and it's a touchdown. All of a sudden, he's killing his back in the game. And and McCorner has to have a happy medium between playing off too far so that Norman gets the ball, turns around, and jukes him out, and being able to come up and make a, a breakdown and make the open field tackle. So McCorner, whoever they isolate Norman on, has a heck of a job. Well, Wimbledon West is going to try to do everything they can to hold on to their 14 to nothing lead. There's 8-11 left to go in the game. If they can just hold on, hold out for a few more minutes, Hill is going to be really hard pressed to try to win this game because they've got to come up with two touchdowns and conversion. 8-10 timeout. Coaches go off the field for both teams. Just got to wonder what Hill has got this lead now. First and ten. I think they'll pass on the first and ten. They've got they have a lot of time. They left, can play with something. They are 14 points down, and that seems to be the only way they're get, able to move the ball. You might look for a little razzle dazzle with Justin Norman. There's all they're trying to do right now is isolate him with one of our players and hope that he can use that flag to build it. There's the reverse. Oh, the fake Take the reverse. It's gonna be a throw. And it's caught. Oh, oh it's caught. missed. It's incomplete. Oh that my a, lord. That was a touchdown that Meyer came up, had to come up because of the uh, supposed reverse and number 80 just streaked down the sidelines all Wendell alone. Wendell Wright, a 5'7", 160-pound wide receiver, was all alone right out there about the 25-yard line, but with the wet ball, it just slipped right through his hands. And just got to think that, the tilt, that may be the loud gasp for Tilden. That was their play. That was their touchdown, and they blew it. Second and 10. Hammond fades back again. Under a lot of pressure. He's way back there. That's very disappointing. Uh, the Hammond was for the Children fans at all. They really applauded the Hammond's athletic ability because it was his effort that made that first time. He was all alone back there. Uh, he wasn't actually exactly alone, but he was the only Children player. He had five Lombard West uh, defensive men on his tail, and he just escaped them. Extraordinary play there by the quarterback Hammond for Children. Tom Ritchie and Dave Sullivan almost nailed him, but he was able to get away from him for the first down up around the 50 yard line. And the back once again. It looks like he's going to pass up and draw up the middle. They pick up about four yards on the play, but the clock continues to run with 7.45 left in the game. That's number 20, Philip Drake on the run. Drake is a 5'9", 150-pounder. We have him listed as a wide receiver, but they're using an awful lot of backs. I guess that even an athlete like Dusty Norman gets tired. 7.25 left to go in the game. Children looking for a big play here to try to get on the board. And a slip to the near side. Hammond fades back. Under pressure, steps up in the pocket, throws. It's Norman. No, oh. Wyatt Wright. It was right down the sideline, but he was double covered by Sweet and the quarter, and the ball was just badly thrown. They ran a little bit of a cross. Jesse Norman ran, started out on the left sideline and then cut towards the middle on a post. He, Hammond looked for Wendell Wright on the left sideline, but they weren't able to get the connection, so it falls incomplete. That'll make it third and six, and this is a big play, because if Tilden doesn't get this, pick this up, they're going to have a lot of problems doing it, uh, on fourth down, trying to throw it. Hammond brings him up, he's got two men in the backfield, and Justin Norman split to this, the near side. Hammond scrambling around, he tries to find somebody over the middle, and it's a, oh, it's an intercepted pass! Bondrak is trying to do it. 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 At the 48 yard line. So Glenberg West, if they can score right here with 655 left to go in the game, the game will be all over. Hart, the quarterback, they got the blitz on. Hart hands off to Jensen, breaks up the middle, he's got free to the 40 to the 35 yard line. Jensen goes all the way to the 35 yard line. Explosive run there by Rich Jensen. And the blitz was on, he, the blocking was extraordinary. Just beautiful, they took the blitz, and Jensen just exploded through the uh, third. A few of the fans who saw him to leave, 
they, they, they look like Lombard West, maybe if they were able to take some more time off the clock, they may have this game all thrown up. One more score and it's all over here at Hanson Stadium. The flag down on the play, it looks like it's gonna be offsides against Tilden. One of their players tried to anticipate the Darren penalty. Tate. Darren Tate trying to get in there a little bit too soon. Sorry, Darren, that's an illegal. Well, you might have seen somebody move, it happened before. Well, it looked like he was, he was right there at the line of scrimmage on the blitz. And he just wanted to try to get more by the left. Oh, they are calling. Wait a excuse minute. Me. And, excuse me. Check off. Mr. Yeah. Referee says, excuse me, it's against Darren Tate and Tilden. So, Tilden fans don't like that. The initial invitation checked off. So that makes it first and five for Glenbard at about the 30 yard line. They've been down in Tilden's end all day. The defense has to be absolutely exhausted. But Glenbard has been able to put it in the end zone. But twice, they are leading 14 to nothing. We're ro rolling down towards six minutes left in the quarter in this game. Once again, Justin Malone is offside. He's trying to anticipate the count, and that's going to give Lombard a first down. Lombard left going with a very long count. They've been going on a quick count earlier in the game, and now, they, when they go, now if they're going to a quick count, still is jumping offside all over the place. 6.06 left in the game. Lombard just letting the clock run down, trying to eat up the ground and the clock. We're under six minutes now. Look out, brings him back up to the line of very slowly. It's first and 10 at the 25 yard line of Tilden. He pitches out to Curtis Strauss. He's got a little bit of running room around the left side, but it's very little. He's brought down by three Tilden defenders. That's a gain of maybe two. Depends on where they're gonna mark his forward progress. That's gonna make it second and eight, maybe nine at about the 24 yard line for Tilden. As it grows dark, if it grows dark here at Hampton Stadium, things are getting a lot darker for Tilden. We're now running down towards 515 left in the game. Remember, West taking about 30 seconds per play. First hard hands off off the middle. Looks like it is the Luke Jensen. Gain of maybe one or two. That was with Jensen, number 85. It'll be third and about eight, maybe maybe a long seven at about the 33 yard line. Well, Glenbard really rolling up the clock. There's 4.45 left in the game. Glenbard looks like they're gonna go into the final game at Dyke Stadium against the winner of the Joliet Catholic Bartonville Limestone game. Howard hands it off to Jensen once again. He runs over the left side, picks up maybe two or three yard line, gets inside the 20 to about the 19, depending on where they spot the ball. That'll bring up fourth down, but the clock continues to roll. We're gonna, by the time this play gets off, it's gonna, we're gonna be down about four minutes left. Well, Glenbard West on this drive, is, that's all they've been doing, running very simple running plays, hold onto the ball and run off the clock. Coach Jim Cover playing it very conservatively now. He just wants to win this game and worry about the next game next week. I bring him up the line of once again. Fourth and five at the 20 yard line. He rolls back. It looks like he's gonna pass. There's nobody open. Tom Reese with a great block. Just got picked up the first down and about the 10 yard line. He's still going. He's out of the five yard line. First down to the Oh, what a play by two times. The key to that play was Tom Reese. He made a great block. It looked like Tempton Hart was gonna be pulled down from behind as he tried to stand away while he's deep behind the line of scrimmage. But Tom Reese put on a great block. Showing why he should have been named to the All-Area team, but he wasn't. Tom Reese is one of the best guards we've seen. That's probably the best guard we've ever played against. It, it was just a real crime that he didn't make the All-Area team. First time bringing him up to the first and the goal just outside the five-yard line. It's uh, Glenn Gross and Jensen in the backfield. The handoff goes to Jensen. There's a flag on the play. He got to about the three-yard line, but we'll have to see what the flag is. It looks like he's going to be holding it against Lombard West. That's what the preliminary indication is. So that's going to be another bad break for Lombard. Just mental mistakes down around the goal line. It's been the only thing that have kept Lombard from scoring 30 points in the game. 323 left in the game. Lombard West looks like they're going to win this and go on to Dyke Stadium next Saturday, November 25th. We don't know whether we're going to be able to bring you that game too, but we're still going to help with you. Think maybe WCA has an exclusive on it, but we're not sure. We possibly can. We're going to br be bringing you the action. Maybe we can just hang outside the stadium and give you updates or something. As Glenbard West goes 
to the final game, and that's what it looks like here. It's going to be good. first and goal at about the 20 yard line. He comes in motion to the near side. Hard drop back. He's rolling out. He's under a lot of pressure. He's throwing down the sideline to number 86 Tom Bob West. He goes out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Game is 10. Great play by Chris Hardy. He was able to avoid the rock and get down to about the get to about the 19 yard line before he had to unload the ball to Tom Vondrak coming across the field on a cross pattern. Unfortunately Tom went out of bounds. He wasn't able to stay in. He tried to decide to stop but under this slick after he wasn't able to do it. That's gonna bring up second and goal at the 10 for Glenbard West. Chris Hart really showing his leadership ability here as he tries to get the team into the end zone for a third time. 3.02 left in the game as they hand off to Jensen around the left end. He's up to about the five yard line. And it looks like they're gonna say it's out of bounds. That stops the clock at 2.56 left in the game. Glenbard West really keeping it on the ground. Coach Hart is playing very conservatively. This is going to be third and goal at the four-yard line. Children just playing for pride right now. They really don't think that they're probably don't think that they can win now with just 256 left in the game, but they can make a good showing. They really want to get the ball back and try to avoid a shutout. Their great offense, the one that scored 42 points against Rivers, has been totally shut down here against Lombard. Chris Hart takes the snap and he pitches out on a quick pitch up Jensen. with Jensen. One yard line. Two-yard line. Spinning away, they mark it. That'll make the fourth and goal. Lombard West trying to get it in. And they're playing for pride, too. They want to see in the score that it was 20 to nothing, or 21 to nothing, or 22 to nothing. Well, they sure deserve those kind of scores because they really have dominated a Tilden team. Tilden going for the big the big plays, and it, the big plays just didn't work. Something happened, like that play just a moment ago with the, uh, the uh, fake reverse in the pass. Just a drop pass. It's just a heartbreaker for Tilton. They've put everything they've had into it, and it's it's been stopped by Glenbard West. Well, it, the ball is right now is just outside the one yard line. You can see how close it is to marking into the end zone. What do you think they're going to call? You think Kanapka hasn't? We haven't seen him too much here. Uh, Send in some growth the fourth quarter. Maybe they'll give it to Bobby, try to get him into the end zone for the first time all oh, season. Yeah. And you will see a crowd go nuts if he gets in. Well, let's see. They might give it to Jensen. I don't know. Who can second guess the mind of a coach, to tell you the truth? Jensen, another, he hasn't scored a touchdown all year either. It would be a real thrill for him as a junior to score a touchdown here in the semifinal game. Well, it looks like Dyke Stadium for us. We're not, we're trying to get that line for you and uh, get that game on WGHS at 8.5 FM. The score right stands right now, 14 nothing. but Lombard West is down at the one-yard line, Astrosky, trying to knock it in. Astrosky and Jensen in the backfield. Oh, and oh, no. number 80, Carl Pikus moved a little too early. In fact, a lot early, and he's going to be nailed for that one. Offside, Carl Pikus, and that was fourth and one, and now it's going to be fourth and six. That's going to make it a lot tougher. Lombard West may try to go to the pass, or they may once again go to the end sweep, the power 38 that's I, been so successful here today. I go for the pass because if they can isolate that man in the corner of the end zone, uh, that's what they do down here in the near the end zone. They try to get the man spread out. I think the best thing they could do would be to put Chris Hart out on a rollout where he has the option to run a pass. And that's exactly what they're doing. Chris Hart rolls out. He's got a man open. It's going to be Jensen at about the three yard line, but he doesn't get into the end zone. Tilden will take over the ball with 2.31 left in the game. Well, we were both right there. We did get Jensen in the corner, but he was in the end zone. And the heart did throw. So Tilden will take over with 2.31 left in the game. Glenn by the West up. Uh, 14 to nothing is our Channel 5. To, Channel 5 leaves the game. I guess they've seen enough. They know. The Glenbard West has won this game. Glenbard West defense just trying to preserve the shutout. Shutout they've worked so hard for. It would be a real shame if they played 40 minutes of perfect football only to have it taken away here in the final second. There's 2.31 left in the game. Tilden back deep in their own end zone. Hammond drops back looking for the, bit, the long bomb. There's Meyer has it. He caught it.
said it all game that Tillman could come back at any moment. And this is the moment in the game. 2.16 is enough time. But the thing is, they have to get the conversion. They, if they want to win the ball game, they either have to get two one-point conversions or a one-point and two-point conversion. If we stop them here, if they go for the two-point conversion, then they can't beat us. This, is, this could be the play of the ball game right here. What are they going to do? They're going for the two-point conversion. If we stop them now, they cannot beat us. Well, unless we go into overtime. Hammond drops oh. back. He's looking for someone to throw to. Tom Bondrack chasing him around. He's looking for someone. What it's is it? No. no, it's incomplete. And it was a trap. Wow. So the score stands 14 to 6. The same score that we beat Oak Park in the final game of the conference season. 2-16 left in the game. You have to figure that Tillman's going to go for the onside kick. And I would think that, you know, if they get it back, then they're just going to go for the same thing. They're going to try to isolate Dempsey Norman one-on-one -on -one with one of our cornerbacks and hope they can get it into the end zone. Myers just got a, a step behind Norman, and that's all it took. And Sean Kelly died for him, but you just don't trip up somebody like Norman. If they were playing the other way, going against the wind, that that wouldn't have happened because the ball caught a good wind current and just carried long enough over Dirk Myers' head. Again, if they were going the other way, the ball would have hung up in the air long enough to say that Miley would have been able to make the play. But going the way they were going, and it was a beautiful pass, they just were able to make it. Jeffrey Norman caught the ball with double coverage, escaped one tackle at about the 40-yard line, and just went on into the end zone in a, just a, in a blaze. Blaze of glory. He's, he's an incredible cast. Four, four, four speed in the 40. Probably Brian yet. McCorder tried to come up, and he's on the track team, too. Okay. Jeffrey Norman is definitely the fastest person we have ever played against. But we've done a good job of containing him both on the passing game and the running game, except for that letdown right there. All those fans who started to leave have now come back. Well, there's a glimmer of hope. This is go, going to go down to the wire, and this could, this, this could be the biggest play of the game. If, if Tillman gets the ball back, then they have a chance. If they don't, then it's all over. You know who Norman's going to be right there, right close to the ball. They're stacking one side of the line. But you've got to figure they're going to kick it to the side where Dempsey Norman is. Everybody in this place knows it's going to be an onside kick. Or maybe they might try to loop it over the... They changed kickers. The second, maybe they might try to loop it over the second line to try to get let Jeff Norman use his athletic ability and come up with the ball between the two lines of the Glenbar. Here it goes. It's going to be covered by Wasnick. Oh, there it is. That's the way you've just got to play. you got to wait for the ball to go 10 yards and then just fall on it and cover it up. Well, Glenbard West practices that. all the, Every week, they have at least two sessions where they practice the onside kick, the onside kick return, and it looks like Tilton had not had any experience with the onside kick, but they were switching everybody around, putting in people here and there. So, again, Glenbard West a little better prepared than Tilton. And that's a, that's a real shame, because we just have to feel for this Tilton team, because they're the Chicago Public League. They don't have the, any facility. They don't have blocking sites. And the Chicago Teachers are strike also. They don't have blocking sleds at their practice facility. They just don't have the chance to get the training that Glenbard West has had, and that's been the difference in the ball game. Oh, uh, man, who? Got to be a Bondrack. Bondrack. a little bit anxious to end this game. 145 left in the game, and he made, and he made the mental error. But in any case, that'll make it second and fifth. That'll make it first and 15. Just have to hope that Glenbard West can just run out the clock here. With, and preserve their 14 to 6 victory. This has been a great game so far. We're just proud to bring it to you. This is WGHS 88.5 FM in Glen Ellen, a sports presentation. Kershaw brings him up to the line. The defense, the defense really trying to force him on a fumble or some sort of turnover. The pitch goes out to Kanaka and he's got behind the line of scrimmage. I got the 39 yard line and Tilden trying to call timeout. The clock is still running. No timeout has been called yet. Oh, and finally the clock is stopped with 135 left of the game. Three or four seconds run out before Tilden could call a timeout. Well, it's second and 15. The Glenbar fans think they've won it, but it's really not over yet. If, if Tilden was able to get the ball back now on a bad snap or something, then they would have a chance to try to tie it up on the two-point conversion. But it's just a matter of Glenbard West making the play. I can see if Glenbard West contains the ball, four more plays at the most. So we'll just have to see what they do. 
Uh, they're not, they'll probably just give it to Kanaka and uh, hope he can break it. And if he gets a touchdown, fine. If he doesn't, then we wasted some time on the clock and it brings us closer to the finals. The first time since 1976 and only the second time in history. And they're undefeated, which is even better. The fifth time in history. Since 1917, his heart hands off to Kanaka and he plummets his way for about a yard. The clock and call time now with 1.30 left. That was only five the seconds. Five, it was a five second play. Tillman, uh, was, the Tillman captain was able to get up in front of the referee and stop the clock. Last time they left the clock around about eight or nine seconds. That time they got only five seconds. That play picked up about two yards. Run by West and now third in about 15. If they don't pick it up, they're going to be forced to punt and Tillman will get the ball back. That's the one thing run by West to avoid. If they can just hold on the ball, pick up a first down here, Tillman won't have enough first down at, at timeouts, excuse me, to stop the clock. They only have one left now. Third and 13, the Tillman defense, this is the play for them. If they stop them here, it's out. If they, if they don't stop them here, it's out of ball game. If they do stop them here, the Tillman offense gets a chance, and Jesse Norman has a chance to tear the time out. Tillman coaches to the coming off the field. They know that this is it. Third and 15. And, the que and another question that comes to my mind is, if we don't make this, we'll cover it. Go for the punt and try to nail him back into the territory, or just go for the fourth down and waste some more time. Hard brings him up. Up inside that later as he tries to go around the left line and he rolls out, but he's going nowhere, but he stays in bounds. He does stay in bounds, he doesn't go out. So the clock Last time out called by Tilden. Clock runs down to 122 left. Now we'll have to see what does Silver do. Does he punt and nail, try to nail against this win? So he faces the block, the possibility of a block. That would be disastrous. But yet again, if they if they don't punt and they miss it, they're around the 45 yard line. And that's that's Tiffany Winks really for a pass to Jesse Norman or yeah, anybody else. He, I it's gonna be a big decision for Culver. I have a feeling he's probably gonna go for the punt because he figures that Glen, the Glenbug West the offensive line can keep Tilden out long enough for Jeff Sweet to get the punt away. But Jeff Sweet's got to come up with a big effort. The wind is blowing straight into his face as he's going to try to cut this off. Massive fans on the other side getting ready to come onto the field. That may be a little bit premature. This game isn't over yet. There's 122 left in the game. But the big thing is, Tilden has no timeouts. And Norman will go back to his own 30 yard line as Sweet will prepare to punt. The block is on, gets it off though. Norman comes up to the 35, bounces, and it's down by Glenbard West at the 40 yard line. So a break there for Glenbard West. Jesse Norman didn't get the ball, and that was a very good time. 113 left in the game. Children gets the ball back. We gotta hold on here. This is all of a sudden a game that Glenbard West dominated for so long has become a real ball game. Children can win this game if they score if, uh, score now and we're, they, if they could get the two-point conversion. It's going to be very close. Now sending overtime. Hammond fades back. Looking, he's under pressure by Reese. He's going to run around, but Sizer is thrown, and is it complete? It, I think they're going to call it incomplete. Yes, they're bringing the ball back. Seidler could have perhaps been called for a rough in the pass the penalty. He did hit him just a little bit late. It was, it was about half a second after he had thrown the ball. It was just a rule that he couldn't stop his momentum. The official is talking to Dave Seidler as they walk back to the huddle. I think that may be a warning. And I think Seidler realized what he's done. It looked like he laid off of him a little bit. He didn't just try to pull the line. So with 1-0-1 left in the game, Lombard West retains it. 14 to 16, trying to hold on here. Norman comes to the near side, he's put another man with him, that's Wendell Wright. Excuse me, no. Fades back, Hammond fades back, looking, throws. 26, can't get it for uh, Tillman, is just overthrown there by Hammond. That was a, that was a pretty poor pass. Hammond had a, Joe Norman. Hammond had a lot of time, but he threw it out of bounds and said he couldn't call that Jesse. And they'll try it. Joel Norman comes out. And we'll have to see what Tilden comes up with. There's 55 seconds left in the game. Third and 10 for Tilden. 
this is this is another big play. All of a sudden, a game that Glenda West is ahead for so long has come down to every play is the biggest play in the ball game. Cannon drops back. He's looking for Jensen Norman once again. He fires over the middle. He's got a There's going to be a flag. It looks like he had a man open, but it's just going to be an injury flag in the middle. I can't believe there wasn't a flag there, actually. Well, I guess the ball was overthrown by the time Norman just went down and he had two men around him. So it looks like interference to me, but perhaps he slipped on that West Red Aston because maybe he tried to make the cut and just fell down, and that's what the official saw. 48 seconds left. Fourth and 10 for Tilden. 14 to 6, Glenbard West lead. They're trying to hold on. This is this is the last dash for Tilden. They have to pick up this first down or else they'll be out of the playoffs. And then season's over. There's, there's, there's no smile and there's no next play if they stay out here. Now they drop back. He's looking for somebody down the sidelines. He finally takes off and running. He's trying to pick up the first down, but he's going to be short. That's about two yards. Oh, he's a good one to mark the ball. It looks like it's going to be well short of the first down at about the 48-yard line. He had to get to across the 49. The officials call it timeout. About a yard away, and they're going to measure it anyway, but it, oh, looks, it, it should be short. It really should yard. be short. They're going to have to call it first down and run by. That should be it. They're not indicating anything yet. Darren Tate walking over, trying to find out what the official's ruling. He may call for a measurement, and they, that's what they're doing. And it's going to be short. Glenbard West is going to win this ball game. There's four, 38 seconds left. Glenbard West looks to have wrapped it up with 14 to 6. And just for the last three minutes, it's been a nail biter. No timeouts for Tilden West. All Glenbard West has to do now is just fall on the ball twice. Get the handoff, get the, the, the snap right. The clock's and rolling the now. The game's all over. 34, 33, 32, 31. Finals. We're going to count this one down. All get we your have maps to, off for All Edison. we have to do is take this ball once. One snap, and this play is over. This should be the last play of the ball game. And then we'll count the rest of it down as the fans are going to stream out on the field. That's going to be it. 15, 14, 13. Well, let's, oh, that's it. And the fans are starting, are starting to line up. They're going to rush the field. Let's hope they don't take down the goal post. Six, five, five four, four. We're going along with the fans three, here. Two, one. Yeah. And it's all over. Dyke Stadium, here we come. Run by West Wolves for the semifinal game. They're going down to the final game for the first time since 1976. Lab time, we lost to St. Lawrence. To St. Lawrence, a Catholic league school. And we're probably They were supposed to win by mega points. And we went there and held our own, but we lost in overtime by one point. And now it looks like we're probably going to be playing Joliet Catholic because it's big. I believe we're not sure on that. We'll try to confirm that later. We'll, we'll have that late, a little, about half an hour for you. We'll wait for a conversation about that. Who won the Joliet Catholic game? So, this is it. Lombard West is in the final game. It was a very tense game there at the end. And the fans have rushed the field to make a little a little circle around the players and they go over and congratulate especially Dempsey Norman, a circle around Dempsey Norman, congratulating him. He played a fine game that just came up short too many times today as Glenbard West has dominated, made a lot of middle mistakes, a lot of middle mistakes on both sides for that matter, and Glenbard West came out ahead. One of the things we just have to really congratulate so now, this is the, this is the best showing by a public league team in many years. This is Tilden, this Tilden team is a great team. And it just happened that today they got a better, better team. And well, for Bill Payton, I'm Troy Cole. Bill Payton, take care of yourselves. Again, score 14 to 6, Lombard West over Tilden, the Tilden Devils. Take care. Okay, you want to make a, I'll wrap this up. You get downstairs. We have to, we have to carry.